Have you ever been somewhere and deep down, in your heart, you just knew that something is gravely wrong? Because, I have. And it did not go well. The sun dipped low on the horizon as we cruised down the winding Mississippi backroads, the sweltering heat giving way to the cooler embrace of dusk. My friends and I were in the midst of a road trip, seeking adventure off the beaten path. It was on one of these remote roads, where the dense forest seemed to swallow us whole, that we stumbled upon it, the decaying playground hidden behind an abandoned orphanage. The sight was eerie, even in the fading light. Rusted swings creaked in the gentle breeze, their chains tangled and twisted like the memories of children who had long since vanished. A cracked slide spiraled down from a rotting wooden platform, and the paint on a merry-go-round had faded to a ghostly pale gray. It was a playground frozen in time, and it sent shivers down our spines. Hey, you guys wanna check it out? Mark, always the adventurous one, suggested with a mischievous grin. His girlfriend, Sarah, raised an eyebrow but couldn't hide her intrigue. Jake, the skeptic of the group, chimed in, what's the worst that can happen? It's just an old playground. Reluctantly, I agreed, my curiosity getting the better of me. We parked the car by the side of the road and made our way toward the forsaken playground. With each step, the creaking of the swings and the eerie stillness of the surrounding forest seemed to grow more pronounced. As we explored the decaying play equipment, it became clear that this place held a sinister history. Faded murals on the walls of the orphanage depicted scenes of children playing happily, but the reality was far from idyllic. We had heard rumors about this place, stories of orphans who had vanished without a trace, tales of abuse and neglect. Mark discovered a stack of old newspapers in the corner of one of the rooms. As we began to sift through them, the headlines told a haunting story. The orphanage had been plagued by a series of unexplained accidents and disappearances. Children had reported seeing strange figures lurking in the shadows, and some claimed that the playground itself was cursed. A chill ran down my spine as I read about the tragic fate of a young girl named Emily, who had been one of the orphans here. She had disappeared one fateful night, and her body was never found. As I read through the faded ink of her journal entries, it was as if I could hear her voice, her innocent musings about the world and her hopes and dreams. Emily's words painted a picture of a spirited young girl, full of life and curiosity, confined to the oppressive walls of the Vanderbilt estate. Her last journal entry was dated the night of her disappearance. She wrote of hearing strange noises in the darkness, whispers that seemed to beckon her from the shadows. Her words were filled with fear and confusion, a desperate plea for someone to save her from the encroaching darkness. A sense of dread washed over me as I continued reading, realizing that Emily's fate had been sealed that very night. The mansion had claimed her as one of its own, its dark history swallowing her whole. The investigation into Emily's disappearance had been nothing short of a nightmare. The local authorities had scoured the surrounding area, searching every nook and cranny of the estate, but there had been no sign of the young girl. It was as though she had vanished into thin air. The journal entries hinted at something more sinister, though. Emily's fear of the strange noises and whispers that plagued her nights pointed to a malevolent presence within the mansion's walls. The orphans had spoken of eerie apparitions and strange happenings, but their tales had been dismissed as the ramblings of traumatized children. The truth was far more horrifying. Emily had not been the only child to disappear within those haunted halls. As we delved deeper into our investigation, we discovered records of other orphans who had met similar fates, children who had gone to bed one night and never woken up. As I closed Emily's journal, I couldn't help but feel a sense of helplessness and dread. The mansion's dark history had claimed the lives of innocent children, leaving behind only whispers of their suffering. We had stumbled upon a tragedy of unimaginable proportions, one that defied explanation. Evelyn and I knew that we had to uncover the truth, to shed light on the horrors that had transpired within the Vanderbilt estate. But as the days turned into weeks, and the mansion's malevolence continued to haunt our every step, we couldn't help but wonder if we had bitten off more than we could chew. The investigation had yielded no leads, and her disappearance remained a mystery. 
Sarah's voice trembled as she read aloud another article about the sudden deaths of several orphanage staff members. They had all perished under mysterious circumstances, and the authorities had been unable to determine the cause. It was as if the very walls of the orphanage held dark secrets that refused to be revealed. We decided to explore further, our flashlights cutting through the oppressive darkness that had settled over the playground. The air grew colder, and a feeling of unease settled upon us. It was as though the past was reaching out to us, whispering its secrets in hushed tones. As we ventured deeper into the orphanage, strange phenomena began to occur. Shadows seemed to move on their own, and the faint echoes of children's laughter filled the air. Sarah swore she saw a figure standing at the end of a dimly lit hallway, but when we approached, there was nothing there. Tensions ran high as we continued our investigation. Mark, who had been the most eager to explore, was now visibly on edge. Jake's skepticism had given way to nervous glances, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched by unseen eyes. It was then that we heard it, the soft, haunting melody of a music box. The sound seemed to come from all around us, its source impossible to pinpoint. We followed the eerie tune to a small, dilapidated room at the end of a corridor. Inside, we found an old music box, its lid adorned with faded images of children playing. The tune it played was achingly sweet, a stark contrast to the foreboding atmosphere of the orphanage. Sarah reached out to touch it, and as her fingers brushed the cold metal, the music abruptly stopped. A sense of dread washed over us, and we knew we had overstayed our welcome in this place. With a newfound urgency, we made our way back to the car, the oppressive darkness of the forest seeming to press in on us from all sides. As we drove away from the abandoned orphanage, our minds raced with questions and unease. What had we stumbled upon? What secrets did that forsaken place hold, and had we unwittingly become a part of its sinister history? One thing was certain, the decaying playground and the orphanage it hid behind were not as they seemed. The shadows of the past lingered there, and the chilling history of the orphans who had once played on those rusted swings was one that would haunt us for years to come. The sun bore down relentlessly as we approached the desolate research complex in the heart of Arizona. The compound had been abandoned for decades, its laboratories filled with mysterious equipment left to gather dust. We were a team of scientists, driven by a thirst for knowledge and a shared sense of curiosity that had brought us together. Little did we know that our pursuit of understanding would lead us down a dark and terrifying path. The complex had once been the site of groundbreaking research, but the nature of those experiments remained shrouded in secrecy. The government had sealed off the facility, and rumors of unethical studies and disturbing phenomena had swirled in its wake. It was that air of mystery that drew us to the place, despite the warnings of locals who knew better than to meddle with the past. Our team consisted of Dr. Emily Turner, a brilliant physicist with a penchant for the unexplained, Dr. Robert Hernandez, a seasoned biologist with a passion for unraveling the mysteries of life, and myself, Dr. Daniel Harris, a chemist with an insatiable curiosity for the unknown. We were united by a shared desire to push the boundaries of human knowledge. The moment we set foot inside the complex, an eerie silence descended upon us. Dust-covered corridors stretched out in all directions, and the air was thick with the scent of decay. The laboratories we explored were filled with perplexing equipment, most of it covered in tarps, as if the scientists had hurriedly abandoned their work. Our first breakthrough came when we uncovered a series of journals hidden in a forgotten storage room. They detailed the experiments conducted in the complex, and as we pored over them, a sense of unease settled upon us. The entries were cryptic, filled with references to the anomaly and the source. It wasn't long before we discovered the lab that held the key to our curiosity, Lab 7A. Unlike the others, it had remained locked, its entrance secured with a heavy steel door. With a mix of excitement and trepidation, we set about breaking in, determined to unearth the secrets hidden within. The moment we stepped inside, we knew we had stumbled upon something beyond our comprehension. The laboratory was filled with arcane machinery, its purpose indecipherable. 
As we examined the equipment, we realized that whatever had been studied here was far from ordinary. Hours turned into days as we delved deeper into the research. We began to understand the complex interplay of energies and forces that the scientists had sought to harness. It was as if they had unlocked the very fabric of reality itself. Our excitement grew, but so did our unease. One night, as we worked late into the early hours, an unsettling event shook us to our core. The machinery in Lab 7A began to hum with an otherworldly energy. Lights flickered, and the air grew charged with an eerie electricity. It was as though the experiments had come back to life, and we were at their mercy. We scrambled to shut down the equipment, our hearts racing with fear and fascination. It was then that we realized the horrifying truth, the experiments conducted here had opened a rift to another realm, and the anomaly referenced in the journals was something beyond our understanding. The dimly lit laboratory was filled with the hum of electrical equipment, the blinking lights of monitors, and the faint scent of chemicals. It was an environment we had grown accustomed to over months of research, but on that fateful night, it became something far more ominous. As my colleague, Dr. Mitchell, and I worked diligently to decipher the enigmatic experiments that had taken place within the laboratory's walls, we couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. The data we had uncovered hinted at research that delved into the very fabric of the universe, probing the mysteries of existence itself. It was a realm of science that held boundless potential but also unfathomable risks. The first sign of trouble came as we attempted to access the core of the research. The computer system, which had been running smoothly for weeks, began to glitch and sputter. It was as though some unseen force was resisting our intrusion, pushing back against our relentless pursuit of knowledge. We tried to regain control of the situation, but it was as if the laboratory had a will of its own. The equipment malfunctioned, spewing sparks and hissing with a malevolent fury. The monitors displayed incomprehensible data, and the lights flickered erratically, casting eerie shadows on the walls. Fear gnawed at the edges of our rationality, but we couldn't tear ourselves away. The research was too important, too tantalizing to abandon. We had ventured into uncharted territory, probing the mysteries of the cosmos, and we couldn't turn back now. As we struggled to regain control, a sense of dread settled over us. It was a realization that we had delved too deep, crossed boundaries that were never meant to be crossed. The laboratory, once a haven of scientific inquiry, had become a battleground between human curiosity and an unnatural force that defied explanation. In our desperation, we managed to deactivate the machinery, and the lab fell silent once more. But the damage had been done. We had glimpsed the abyss, and it had stared back at us with malevolent intent. Over the following days, we attempted to seal the rift and contain the anomaly, but it proved to be an insurmountable task. The complex itself seemed to resist our efforts, as though it had become sentient and sought to protect the dark secrets hidden within. Tensions within our team grew as fear and paranoia took hold. We had become prisoners of our own curiosity, trapped in a complex that defied the laws of science and reason. The journals we had uncovered hinted at the dire consequences of meddling with forces beyond our control, and we realized that we were now living those consequences. In the end, we made the only choice we could, to leave the complex and seal it off once more, hoping that the anomaly would remain contained within its walls. As we retreated from that place of unspeakable horror, we couldn't help but wonder if we had glimpsed the very edge of reality itself, and if the darkness we had awakened would forever haunt our dreams. The complex in Arizona stood as a silent testament to the dangers of unchecked curiosity, a place where the boundaries between science and the supernatural blurred, and where the pursuit of knowledge had led us down a path from which there could be no return. The southern sun hung low in the Louisiana sky as Dr. Evelyn Davis and I stood before the decaying mansion. With its ivy-covered walls and ominous air, the place seemed to exhale history itself. I, Dr. Samuel Mitchell, had come as a historian, and Evelyn as an archaeologist. Our shared curiosity had drawn us together, but little did we know what dark secrets lay hidden within those decaying walls. The mansion, known locally as the Vanderbilt Estate, had long stood abandoned, 
its history buried beneath layers of dust and vines. It was said that the original owner, Alexander Vanderbilt, had disappeared mysteriously, leaving behind a legacy of enigma. Legends of strange happenings and eerie apparitions had swirled around the estate, but we were here to uncover the truth. With a mixture of trepidation and excitement, we ventured inside, armed with flashlights and our knowledge of the past. The air inside was heavy with the scent of rot and decay, and our footsteps echoed through the grand but crumbling hallways. Dust-covered portraits stared down at us with faded eyes, as though judging our intrusion. It wasn't long before we stumbled upon a hidden chamber, concealed behind a bookshelf in the mansion's library. The chamber was small, barely large enough to accommodate two people, and its walls were lined with cryptic artifacts, strange symbols etched onto stones, archaic manuscripts, and unsettling figurines. Evelyn's eyes gleamed with curiosity as she examined the artifacts. These are unlike anything I've ever seen, she whispered, her voice barely audible in the heavy silence of the chamber. These symbols, they don't belong to any known civilization. I nodded, my heart pounding with excitement. This could rewrite history, Evelyn. We may have stumbled upon something truly remarkable. Over the weeks that followed, we dedicated ourselves to deciphering the artifact's meanings. Late into the night, we pored over ancient texts and consulted experts from around the world. But the more we learned, the darker the mansion's history became. Alexander Vanderbilt, it seemed, had been obsessed with the occult. The symbols on the artifacts pointed to rituals and ceremonies that defied reason. There were references to a gateway and an other side, as well as cryptic mentions of the Keeper of Secrets. As we pieced together the puzzle, an unsettling feeling settled upon us. The mansion itself seemed to react to our investigations. Shadows danced in the corners of our vision, and we heard whispers in the dead of night, though we were the sole living souls present. The chamber was a small, dimly lit space within the decaying mansion, its walls lined with shelves bearing an array of cryptic artifacts. As we ventured further into the room, our initial sense of excitement gave way to an unsettling feeling of unease. One evening, as we delved into the artifacts once more, a shiver ran down my spine, and I couldn't help but glance over my shoulder. It was a sensation I couldn't quite shake, that eerie feeling of being watched. I brushed it off as mere paranoia, a byproduct of the eerie surroundings, and turned my attention back to the artifacts. Evelyn, my partner in this endeavor, had also grown increasingly uneasy in recent days. Her usually composed demeanor was marred by a nervous tension that seemed to cling to her like a shadow. We had both been captivated by the mystery of the mansion and its hidden chamber, but now, our fascination was tinged with a growing sense of dread. As we meticulously examined each artifact, our fingers trembling slightly, the room seemed to close in around us. The low hum of the mansion's decaying structure outside was accompanied by the occasional creak and groan, as though the very walls of the chamber were whispering secrets of their own. I couldn't help but glance at Evelyn again, and this time, I saw fear in her eyes, a reflection of the fear that had taken hold of my own heart. It was as though an unseen presence lingered in the room with us, its eyes trained upon our every move. As we continued our exploration, the atmosphere in the chamber grew increasingly oppressive. The air seemed to thicken with an otherworldly presence, and the dim light cast long, ominous shadows that danced along the walls. It was as though the room itself had become a living entity, one that resented our intrusion into its secrets. I dared not voice my concerns to Evelyn, for fear of confirming the dread that had taken root within us both. Instead, we pressed on, our determination warring with our growing sense of foreboding. But that evening, as I reached for an ancient tome, my hand hesitated in mid-air. I had heard it, a soft, whispered breath that sent chills down my spine. I turned slowly, my heart pounding, and for a brief, horrifying moment, I saw nothing but the dimly lit chamber. Then, in the faint glow of a flickering candle, I saw it, a fleeting shadow, a silhouette that shouldn't have been there. Panic surged through me, and I stammered Evelyn's name. She turned toward me, her face pale, and I could see that she had heard it too, the whispered breath, 
the ghostly presence that lingered in the room with us. These artifacts, they're a key, she murmured, her fingers trembling as she traced the symbols. A key to something beyond our understanding. I agreed, though I couldn't shake the feeling that we were delving into a darkness that should have remained hidden. But our curiosity drove us on, and we began to uncover the mansion's sinister past. It was said that Alexander Vanderbilt had used the artifacts and experiments to open a gateway to another realm, to seek knowledge from beings beyond our world. The experiments had led to madness, disappearances, and ultimately, to the mansion's abandonment. As we read more, we realized that the gateway had never been closed. The mansion itself was a vessel, and the keeper of secrets was still bound to it. We were now part of a dark and malevolent history, and the mansion sought to claim us as its own. Our sleepless nights were filled with nightmares, visions of shadowy figures and cryptic symbols. We knew that the only way to free ourselves from the mansion's grasp was to seal the gateway, but doing so would require a sacrifice. As we prepared for the ritual, we couldn't help but wonder if we were making a grave mistake. The mansion's malevolence had grown stronger, and we feared that it would not release us willingly. In the dimly lit chamber, we stood at the center of a circle we had painstakingly drawn on the floor, our voices trembling as we recited incantations passed down through ancient texts. The symbols we had carefully etched into the ground glowed faintly, casting eerie patterns of light and shadow across the room's decaying walls. We had embarked on a journey into the unknown, and the air grew heavy with the anticipation of what we were about to unleash. As we chanted, the very atmosphere in the chamber seemed to shift, as though the room itself were alive with an otherworldly energy. It was a palpable presence, a force that transcended our understanding of the natural world. The temperature dropped, and our breaths formed frosty plumes in the chilled air, despite the sweltering heat outside. The artifacts we had collected, each imbued with its own mystique, pulsed in response to our incantations. The ancient tomes, their pages filled with cryptic text, seemed to resonate with hidden knowledge. Relics of a bygone era, adorned with intricate symbols and patterns, took on a life of their own, as though they yearned to share their secrets. As our voices rose and fell in the arcane cadence of the incantations, the room itself seemed to react. Shadows danced on the cracked and weathered walls, their movements taking on a sinister life of their own. The very floor beneath our feet seemed to shift and ripple, as though the chamber were a living entity, responding to our invocation. Fear and anticipation gnawed at the edges of our consciousness, but we pressed on, driven by an insatiable curiosity to unlock the mysteries that had been concealed within the hidden chamber for centuries. The room grew darker, and the flickering candlelight cast eerie, elongated shadows that seemed to writhe and twist in the corners of our vision. As we neared the culmination of the incantations, a sense of foreboding settled upon us like a heavy shroud. We could feel the ancient powers we had invoked drawing nearer, their presence looming on the precipice of our reality. It was in that moment, as the air grew thick with an oppressive tension, that we realized the gravity of our actions. We had delved too deeply into the unknown, ventured too far into the forbidden territory of arcane knowledge. The chamber itself had become a vessel for the ancient and malevolent forces we had unwittingly awakened. Suddenly, a cold wind swept through the chamber, extinguishing our candles and plunging us into darkness. We heard whispers, the voice of the Keeper of Secrets, urging us to join it on the other side. Fear and dread coursed through our veins as we realized the horrifying truth. With trembling hands, we completed the ritual just in time, sealing the gateway and banishing the malevolent presence from the mansion. But the cost had been high, and we knew that we could never return. As we left the Vanderbilt estate behind, we couldn't help but feel that we had narrowly escaped the clutches of darkness. The artifacts remained locked within the hidden chamber, their secrets now hidden once more. Evelyn and I went our separate ways, forever marked by our encounter with the mansion's chilling history. We had uncovered the truth, but at what price? The Vanderbilt estate stood as a testament to the dangers of curiosity, a place where the line between the known and the unknown blurred, and where the pursuit of knowledge had led us to the brink of madness. Now, before we come back with brand new episodes for you, 
do subscribe to our channel Horror Talker. And share it with your friends and family. Until next time, stay awake and stay alert, because, you never know.